due to public demand a lot of you have told me hey joseph clarify on the video that you made why we should avoid merry-go-round groups first of all for those who do not know what i talk about or what i mean by merry-go-round groups merry-go-round groups this kind of a, a group whereby let's say five people or ten people or whichever the number you come together and let's say you do a contribution either daily weekly or monthly and then the contribution that you do you put it in a bank account just lying idle and then after every month or after every day or after every week you give one person okay you give the other person you give the other person you give the other person until all of you goes round and then you start once again and then maybe you can do this by doing what we call the random shuffle tickets or something to get number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten if you are ten of you or one two three four five if you are five of you i better have cleared that picture to understand what is a merry-go-round groups that is now what we call the merry-go-round groups and that is what i am here to say hey you're supposed to avoid it and i made a video about this last time and i actually discussed it and a lot of people especially Especially on TikTok, that video got over 2 million views out there. People are saying, hey, you know what? I have actually managed to pay school fees using the merry-go-round. I've managed to go ahead and buy some of the furnitures in my house using the merry-go-round. I've managed to do this with merry-go-round. And whenever I see those kind of comments, I get scared. I understand that a lot of people need financial literacy. People do not know what is financial literacy. People, they may think that they are developing by virtue of them buying furniture, by virtue of them paying the school fees and all those kind of things. All right. And those are not developmentals. Those are sustainables. All right. And the moment you see kind of an argue, that kind of an argument, and there is no problem, there is nothing wrong with you being financially literate, but there is everything to do, everything wrong to do when you actually are financially literate, illiterate, and at the same time you are ignorant the moment you hear something new that you have never had and maybe so perhaps this one disturbs your comfort disturbs on what you believe what you're supposed to do first of all is to unlearn for you to relearn let me just write that down now, okay? For example, there is something that you know right now. See, what you do for you to learn a new thing, you do what? You unlearn, right? You unlearn to do what? To relearn. You get what I'm saying? Now, this is the point. On this video, I'm going to talk about why at all the cost you're supposed to avoid the merry-go-round, especially in this 21st century. Perhaps maybe I should shed a little bit of light on why this merry-go-round exists in the first place. Back then, there are some group of people in Africa, especially in Kenya, I'm going to use Kenya as an example. Women were not allowed to open bank account then. But nowadays, they can be able to do that, okay? Now, see, if they were not allowed to open bank accounts, they wanted to get credit for themselves, maybe to start businesses, ventures, and all those kind of things. So they had to come together as a group and also be able to be able to, you know, contribute that money and be able to be giving those loans to their, among us, the individuals, so that they can be able to realize their financial journey, all right? So that thing continued until the laws of Kenya changed and everyone now, including male and female, they were able to open a bank account and can be able to proceed to the next level, okay? And remember this, <clears throat> I do not have a problem with the merry-go-round group that progressed until to a point whereby they became sort of a CBOs or community-based organization where they have a bank account and they graduated to a point of becoming the circles, okay? <clears throat> they graduated to become circles. There is no problem. For example, some of the banks in Kenya, and I want I want to mention the name. Some, by the way, one of the biggest, I think it's the biggest or one of the biggest. The second is that the first or the second actually started as a circle or something of sort. Now, why am I saying you're supposed to avoid the merry-go-round groups? This is the point. It's very simple and clear. And as I go ahead and explain this, Make sure that you take your second and like the video. It does not cost you anything. Just like the video. Down below there on your right, there is a small button written subscribe. Hit that subscription button. And I know you're asking why. Why? Because you'll be notified by YouTube whenever I upload a new good video. Because I upload a video every day. All right. Let's get the business. Now, here. Why I'm saying you're supposed to avoid the merry-go-round group is something that your merry-go-round group will never achieve and has never catered for. There is something called inflation. There's something called inflation. Your merry-go-round group will never cater for that. Especially right now in Kenya, we are talking about of inflation of, let's say, a give or take of 6%, all right? <clears throat> if you're having this kind of an inflation, and you're maybe, let's say, you're five of you. Five of you contribute 10K daily, for example. There's some groups people contribute daily. Let's say maybe you contribute weekly. Say you contribute 5K or 10K weekly and you're five of you. Meaning, after a period of one week, <clears throat> you have what? You have 50,000. All right. Now, this 50,000, what you do, you give it to number one. There's number one, two, three, then four and five. So the first week, first week, you give it to number one, two, three. And then at the end of the fifth week, everyone has gotten their 50,000. And guess what happens? I want to show you how useless this merry-go-round is. OK, now, see, the first person get the 50K. So what does the first person do with the 50K? They go buy their furniture. 
they go by the they go pay their school fees or something of sort they go by all those kind of things guess what happens in that period of a whole month their money has been subjected to an inflation of six percent obviously this is per annum okay now what happens is that you end up doing the same same thing that you could have done if you were to save by yourself in the same case if you were to take this money and put it in a bank maybe say in a fixed account you could have gotten your money at the 50k in a period of five weeks why you put the 10 10 10 10 times 5 you get yourself 50 you go withdraw again see if you are a person who misuses the money if you are an individual who do not know how to invest you just prolong the inevitable how would you prolong the inevitable you prolong the inevitable by virtue of you just coming together with this group of people and then instead of you getting that money instead of saving by yourself because you say hey if i save by myself i'm gonna go ahead and break that piggy bank i'm gonna go eat that money and then at the end of the day, I'm going to squander. So the problem is not you. Said, the problem is you actually having that personality that you cannot be able to save by yourself. So at the end of the day, if you can be not be able to, you know, <laughs> there are people who said I cannot be able to sleep in my house with 10,000. So it's either me or the 10,000. That's a fact. So you need to work on your personality. You need to work on how you perceive things. Okay. Now, this is what happens. So even if you're given the 50,000, remember you have the same, same brain, you have the same, same attitude, and you have the same, same personality. So if you have a misuse or if you do not have, know how to cater for the 10,000, you get the 50, you're still going to do the same thing. That's a reality. So what you're supposed to do when you realize you have that mistake or you have that problem of financial literacy, you cannot be able to save your money, you are indiscipline. Work on your indiscipline, work, work on your discipline, and then work on your consistency. And at the same time, join together with people who have a long-term goals. If if you ask me when it comes to you coming together as a group, and I'm not discouraging that, okay? You are supposed to be in groups. There is nothing wrong with that, okay? So what you're supposed to do, perceive it from a long-term perspective. For God's sake, instead of getting this 50000 and paying the school fees, or maybe buying the furniture, all those are sustainable. Focus on development. If you come together, five of you, and say, hey, guess what? We are getting this money for the sake of us getting properties in future, for the sake of us getting into infrastructure or other building let's say rental incomes and all those kind of things maybe starting some uh, businesses out there maybe starting a company or something of sort now you're speaking big but if after five weeks i get my five thousand i go to square one i do the same thing i buy the same thing i go to the square one i do the same things for god's sake these are people who are not informed about the financial literacy and about investments if you are well informed you brother even go, don't do the 10k per week do the 5k Maybe this is what you can be able to do. Is this, if you are doing the 5K today and very go round thing, 10K today, go ahead and divide that money to two. If you must be in a merry-go-round, of which I totally disagree and totally discourage, you brother divide this money to two. Get the 5K into a merry-go-round thing if you actually have need a lot of cash. For example, we have some business people. You know, for example, maybe the five of you guys, you maybe operate from a semi, sem, sem, a certain locality and you need cash flow. There are some businesses that require a lot of cash flow. So you can decide this. This 10,000 I've been setting aside it and every week I'm going to divide it into two. One for short-term goals, two for long-term goals. The 5K, I'm going to go it go ahead and continue with the merry-go-round thing so that at every period of fifth week i'm getting my fifty thousand. therefore i can be able to be able to restock my shop maybe say you're operating a shop or a certain business therefore you can be able to continually have that wheel rotating at all the time because hey businesses survive on vitamin m so if you're into business and you're having a merry-go-round thing that's an amazing thing it works because you get that money and you can be able to save uh, as a group and then the other 5k that you have now the same same group you can agree Guess what? Out of the 10K that you are contributing, let five go to the merry-go-round and let the other five go to a long-term point of view, whereby you get this money, you put it in an investment somewhere, and then continually that investment or that money that maybe you can decide, hey, guess what? Let's go register this company of ours, or rather, let's go register uh, this group that we have. We can put our money in an MMF. We can put our money in treasury bills once we reach a certain particular level. For example, if you contribute 5,000 each and every week, five of you, you have your 25,000. So the first week and the second week, you have your 50K. You're already qualified to invest on treasury bonds. You're already subjected to an interest. After every six months, you have an interest. After the fourth week, you have another one. After So let's say maybe in a period of, let's say, like six months, you have a quite of a substantive amount of money that you can channel towards the treasury bonds. And then, let's say each and every month now, what am I saying? After five, five weeks, uh, the first week, you have your 25,000. The second week you have your 25,000, 25. So you have 25,000 times 5. In a period of 5 weeks, you have 75,000. So if you were to say 6 weeks, 
six weeks less than that's like one and a half months you have a hundred thousand a hundred thousand you put this in a treasury bonds you put this in a treasury bonds treasury bonds in kenya right now is giving you 16.8 percent okay now this that is after six weeks so in every period of six weeks and in a month or rather in an year how many weeks do we have we have 52 weeks so if you have 52 weeks in a month in an year so you take that 52 weeks 52 weeks divided by six so that you can be able to know how many times will you be able to invest on these treasury bonds because there is something i'm aiming you'd get okay see for example if you're putting a one and a half months one and a half months you're investing uh you're investing let's say a hundred thousand okay that's what you're investing so in a period of three months you have invested 200 okay 200 k therefore out of the 12 month divided by three you have the four times so you're gonna invest at the end of the year you have how many times have you invested this amount of money because in a period of so it's four times of <clears throat> this 200 so therefore it means that you have invested how much 800 k at the end of the year at the end of the year that is 800 k now it will be 16.8 percent let's say maybe after the tax maybe let's say this goes back to 14 percent let's say 14 percent it's 14 percent of 800 k now what is a 14 percent of 100 k we are talking of ups of 100 k at the end of the year so after every six months you're gonna be getting how much Guess what? You're going to be getting yourself like 50k or something of sort. Now, when you invest after every every three months, every three months, you're going to have yourself to a point whereby you are earning interest monthly, 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 monthly. So interest is kicking in. So it at every month, you have a bond that is maturing. Can you imagine if you're having 100k coming in each and every month, if you're continually feeding this beast continuously? What do I mean? Like, for example, instead of taking a million bob and put it in a treasury bond, you can decide, hey, guess what? I'm going to do this continually for the next 10 months. The first month, at 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. So it means starting from next year, you're going to have like continuously every month you're getting something. Every month you're getting something. And that is what, guys, you're supposed to focus on. If you create this beast to a point whereby every month you get 100K that is coming in, this is interest. Your capital is still there. The capital is still preserved. This interest now you're getting in, you can decide, hey, should we plow back this money? Yeah, obviously we should plow back the money because you're looking at it from a long-term goal. Or you can shift now from treasury bills and now retain what we call the purchasing power, retain retain what we call the liquidity. You can, the profit that you're getting from the treasury bonds, you can channel it towards a money market fund because money market fund every month, it's payable. You get interest each and every month. And therefore, you have two investments. You have money that is coming in every month and you have money that is coming in as well from the treasury bill or rather from the money market fund. And then continuously you do that. That is exactly how you grow. That's how you progress. And that way, you can be able to say, hey, guess what? In a period of two, three, four, five years, just give yourself like a period of five years, you're going to have yourself a very big portfolio. Even as a group, when you decide to go and purchase a property, go ahead and purchase a property, all right? So you go purchase that property, you value add that property, you can decide to resell the property, you can decide to come up with the rental or commercial areas or something or sort. That is when you talk big that's when you actually perceive a long-term perspective but when you just deal with these short-term goals you're paying school fees and then you're buying yourself carpets you're buying yourself utensils and whatever that's not progressive that is just you know sort of comfort or something of sort it's not really that thing i would suggest that you focus on as far as the growth is concerned well i know there are some some of you still are, are debating on this matter but it is what it is sometimes to get off that what you've actually acquired in that long period of time it becomes a little bit tough and you know, but anyway, at the end of the day, we are here to help each other. Tell me on the comment section, do you still disagree with me or agree with me? Just just be open. Don't don't fear. Just say, Joseph, I disagree with you on that or Joseph, I agree with you on that. And that way we actually get this ball rolling. Even if it means me making several videos for you to understand what I'm talking about, so be it. Here, we're going to create this platform for us to actually learn something as far as the investments are concerned. For now, it's a goodbye. But don't forget, my number is always on the description.